recording. Recording started. Um, okay, uh, I think that's it from me. So I'm going to pass this off to Merrill, um, who will get us started. Thank you. Miguel? Good afternoon, I believe, uh, for everybody, or good morning, depending on where you may be located. My name is Miguel Ferrer. I am uh, responsible for the product that we will be reviewing today uh, uh, for the news project. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been working with Merrill for a few years now on uh, bringing his uh, vision to life in terms of something that is uh, a primarily a, a utility, utility for the business side of a news organization as much as for the editorial side. And those two are equal in our mind and equally important for the health and success of the organization. And so uh, we try to walk that fine line that is uh, so critical for your uh, long-term success. By way of background, I've been on the editorial side as well as the business side at different uh, uh, digital media organizations, including uh, divisions within Time Inc., but more uh, relevantly, I believe, uh, Huffington Post, AOL, uh, Fusion um, as employee, and I've, I've been consulting for a number of organizations for the past, past few years. Um, I'm proud of what we've developed here, and I think it, uh, yeah, you'll find it compelling and certainly will we'll create a, a good um, list of questions that we can tackle towards the end. So with that, I'll pass it over to Merrill and I will drive the uh, initial part of the, of the presentation and then we'll get to the product presentation. Thanks, Miguel. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Merrill Brown. I'm the uh, founder of The News Project, a company we created, really got operational uh, in 2018 with a singular goal and that is to come up with the most comprehensive uh, news platform product we could for um, uh, particularly for entrepreneurs and uh, early stage news companies, uh, small to medium sized newsrooms, with a goal of trying to both simplify and, um, and bring down the cost of professionally operating a news site with all the complexity, both from a production and business model point of view, uh, bring down that complexity as much as possible. I want to go through very briefly the background and how we got to where, where we were. We're going to run a few slides right now, Miguel. So um, everyone on this call knows this. Um, journalism is, uh, is under, underfunded in many ways and is overwhelmed by a period of change we're in. Um, uh, surviving news brands can't really keep up with the change, and yet we need great reporting more than ever in this moment of policy and, and um, demographic change. The public wants to engage with us, and lots of people, including I assume everyone on this call, wants to address the current news crisis, but the challenges of doing so appear daunting to many people. There you go. Um, many uh, news organizations uh, struggle with the complexity of the revenue model. Uh, it's hard to get the model right. It's hard to make uh, the right choices. And there's really not much guidance for helping people understand the right models to launch and how that model should evolve. We're uh, aiming to try to address that problem as well. There you go. Um, you know all these organizations, I'm sure, on the right. Uh, they are confusing to people. It's unclear which of them one might use. There is no single technology solution that gives people everything they need. Uh, founders and early stage news companies struggle with the right approach. And although there's lots of data out there, there really isn't sufficient context to help new publishers gain insight about how to make it all work. Here we go. Uh, so that's us presenting the news project, a new venture, although we're not brand new, we certainly are new in the uh, marketplace as we've just released our uh, platform product, but we're devoted to using technology and business intelligence to help people launch and operate new sites uh, who are reporting on both undercover topics and uh, communities. And that's a broad swath of, um, of uh, objectives and, um, and potential customers. We got uh, how do we help? Well, we do eight different things, basically. We have an enterprise-level CMS uh, built on, uh, on WordPress. We provide technology for convenience, for speed, and to reach new audiences. Uh, we have quite a team of people who uh, we think uh, know what we're doing across the range of skills required. We provide audience development and community building support uh, through a couple people uh, who are part of our group. Uh, through technology provided by one of our partner companies, we offer everything in the registration sphere uh, from simple registration to email to subscription membership paywall, et cetera, whatever the proper model is for our customer. We offer uh, uh, revenue diversification capabilities as well. 
we're all business development veterans, so uh, we can help people think through and uh, implement partnerships. And we have a dashboard and a series of business intelligence tools um, that provide you hopefully uh, insights that are both important but also actionable. Miguel. Uh, so this is our platform, and this is a look at a sample template. We built 75 templates, and Miguel will walk you through more of it. But the goal is to have created everything one needs to operate a new site. Uh, templates down to the about page are all built, all the interstitial uh, kinds of um, capabilities that ask people to sign up for newsletters or otherwise engage, we've built all that. So it's a comprehensive solution ready to roll from day one. This slide references a product tour, which you may wanna look at later. It is, a, um, it is on our site on the navigation, just click tour and you could walk through uh, a, a run through of our capabilities. There you go. So our first customer uh, out, of the, out of the block is a really influential, important site that hopefully a number of you know. It's Cal Matters, which is the largest independent um, policy and politics site in California, arguably as newsy a place as there is um, in North America. Um, these, uh, these templates were built based on their goals. This is a customized, look, uh, customized homepage and a look at a homepage some months ago. We've given lots of strategic advice and you'll see the little logo and uh, California shaped piece of business in the left hand corner. We also created for them a brand new um, brand identity. So we like to say with Cal Matters, we really have reimagined the site and given them a whole new approach to both their editorial operation and their business. We have uh, multiple customers, but this is the only one uh, in the public domain at the moment. There we go. So this is a little bit about us and uh, our capabilities. Uh, you've met Miguel. Um, uh, you can read a little bit about me here. I've been involved in editorial matters um, as a journalist and as a business person uh, my entire career. Um, our UI and UX is provided by a charming robot. You can look at their work, but we consider them especially in UX to be a world leader. They've worked for many, many news companies. And in searching uh, for the best way to build our site, we chose a development partner, TenUp, which we think is the best um, WordPress development company in the country. And they give, give us enormous engineering reach. Our customers and our company have access to what is now, I think, 150 uh, engineers uh, worldwide in their company. And that means, although we're an early stage small company, we have access to engineering resources, which give us um, the, uh, the reality of being much broader in our capabilities than we might, uh, we might appear. TenUp's a really important part of our, uh, our team. There you go. Uh, this is a look at some of our people. Uh, Alex Leo, I'd call your attention to on the bottom left. She's an audience development professional. Maybe some of you know her. Uh, she was last the uh, head of audience, vice president of audience development at Daily Beast. Before that, ABC, Reuters, and so forth, as you can see. Uh, Peggy, who is our chief business officer and head of revenue, uh, has run things like businessweek.com. She ran Yahoo Finance and so forth. It's a strong, deep, deep team, and this is just a sampling of, uh, of who we are. We go. So uh, thank you. That's the opening part of the uh, presentation, and Miguel will take you uh, into the site um, and uh, show you uh, much of what we built from several different perspectives. Thank you. Hey, everybody. So uh, I have to apologize a little bit because uh, with the perfect timing that I am known for, I have uh, picked up a little bit of a cold from my son, and so I will be coughing, and with that, I can really only apologize. I thought I had... Uh, self-medicated myself properly before this. So anyway, let me uh, get to the share here portion of the um, product review. <coughs> <coughs> and I promise you that as I talk, this will pass. So bear with me. Um, as Merrill mentioned, the uh, tour that we will base our presentation today on is available on our website. <coughs> it is open to everybody. And I'll use it really just as a guide to uh, hit all the main things, but I will jump to other tabs that you probably can see to show you some examples of those other designs or what we've done for Cal Matters and so forth. <coughs> so again, let's get into it. <coughs> so where I'd like to start the, uh, the, the conversation about the tour or the product, excuse me, is to remember the kind of the goal here is to 
super serve the news and the business that you all are a part of. And, and we'd like to think of that what we have put together is uh, news business in a box, right? Because ultimately the success of your news enterprise is dependent on a number of factors beyond the great journalism or content or information that you are presenting to your public. And so we'd like to think that what we're really ultimately doing is not only providing, but maintaining a state of the art digital news publishing tech, right, um, that allows you and supports you in your focus and your ability to excel at journalism, audience development, and revenue generation. Those three pillars primarily are the ones that will dictate your ability to um, be relevant and uh, in, des in demand for a longer period of time for a particular audience. So the components of the product <coughs> exemplified or summarized in this uh, box, uh, very literally, are, uh, are as follows, right? Certainly a state-of-the-art content management system, which we'll go into a little bit more and we'll show you. Um, engaging a responsive uh, UX uh, and the design that follows. Audience development and engagement, not only the tools embedded within the product, but also the capability and the know-how of how to use those tools and towards what purposes. Uh, it has to be revenue ready, ready and has to be diverse in that revenue readiness, right? So subscriptions, advertising, sponsorships are a place to start <clears throat> with all of those. And um, while we're not looking to supplant uh, the incredible tools that are out there in terms of really deep dives in, into analytics and uh, insights and so forth, we believe there's an opportunity to present those uh, in, a, in a fashion that allows the entire organization not just those who are uh, creating or editing the, the material that is appearing on the website, but the entire organization to have a better sense of how is this su supporting those, those business goals as much as those content goals or those journalist goals. And ultimately that this all be delivered in a, in a platform that is uh, as simple, as elegant and seamless as possible. <clears throat> so let's begin with the, uh, the, the top right, which is the content management system. As Merrill mentioned, uh, we are built on top of WordPress and on top of VIP as the hosting and security uh, platform. Uh, that allows a certain number of things, uh, in particular, a robustness, a security, a uh, redundancy and protection of your sites that um, often small to medium sized publishers um, are not uh, uh, able to benefit from. <clears throat> and that is uh, delivered at a, in a, as part of the service um, that we believe shouldn't be exclusive to the biggest players in the industry who can afford anything. We believe that if you are in, ju in journalism today, you, you deserve the same support and, and protection um, and ability to be uh, uh, live 24-7, immediate uh, results uh, or, or, or remedial, immediate fixing if, uh, if uh, things go wrong. And that is then also where our 10 up partnership comes in. As Merrill mentioned, 150 engineers strong, able to um, uh, not only be critical uh, uh, and, and uh, impactful in terms of the early decisions made by TNP in order to develop a platform that you can use, but as we get into uh, implementation of that platform to really be able to reflect your particular needs. Now, customization is a word that can be easily thrown around and we can promise the world in terms of what's customized, but the real opportunity here is that by having uh, baked in a lot of what you're gonna need for the long run, particularly around publishing, audience development, and revenue, that the customization aspect can be uh, reduced and we can focus on or we can help you focus on those things that are really going to drive your long-term success which again are the content the audience that consumes it and your ability to uh, monetize that so what does this uh, CMS include um, in terms of some <clears throat> uh, particular capabilities well it's also certainly uh, optimized for mobile uh, we all know the reason why so I won't go into that um, it is highly scalable secure uh, it performs very well um, we have uh, done what is uh, expected and beyond in terms of enhancing your SEO abilities. And again, that comes from tool side in terms of, uh, you know, using plugins such as Yoast, optimizing those for our particular version of, these, uh, of, of WordPress or flavor of it, and how we work with you to implement that, right? So taxonomy review, um, analytics of your existing uh, search and uh, optimization and what works well, what isn't working well, and help you craft a plan for going forward, which we then remain 
uh, available to you uh, to check in on that. How's it going? What else needs to be done? So this is where this idea of our service and our experience coupled with the product continuously uh, pays dividends to you. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with it, which I imagine uh, many are, but maybe some aren't, the WordPress editor, now called Gutenberg, uh, is uh, very much um, uh, kind of what you see is what you get. Um, uh, it's not exactly perfect to your front end in terms of what you're experiencing on the back end in publishing and creating that content, but it is a lot closer than it has been in the past and that is improving. And uh, Gutenberg specifically looked to improve uh, its capabilities with fewer plugins, so fewer security vulnerabil vulnerabilities. It's multimedia first. Um, it's optimized for multimedia heavy layouts as are our designs and our UX. It's a... Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it is uh, works across all screen sizes and devices, uh, things of that nature, and you get a better feel as an editor for what your website, what your user uh, is going to experience when they interact with that content. <clears throat> when we think then of the next step to this is uh, really the appearance and performance of your site, what it looks like, how people uh, uh, relate to it, and this is where we focus really on the UX first. What is that experience? And let that dictate then the design. So our templates were, ta were tailored for modern news publishers, right? And I'll show you the list of everything that we have in just a minute. They're mobile optimized, I mentioned. And we really tried to be true to the idea that content presentation, audience recirculation, and messaging, be it for advertising, for membership, for internal um, initiatives of the organization, you have to leave space for that. It has to be treated with equal importance, ultimately, so that all of these things can help lift the overall um, the business of this news organization. And as mentioned <clears throat> earlier, uh, the templates, while they, a lot of work has gone into them to set a baseline from which to, be, uh, to start and have a conversation with you, uh, our, our potential customer, there is a lot of opportunity for customization, not only for, from us as the uh, implementation partner, but once you're up and rolling, the idea really be to give you as much local control as possible without sacrificing the benefits um, and, uh, uh, of the platform itself, right? So this that you're seeing here, as it says here at the top, is a sample of a homepage template. It's not our only template, but it is a place where we like to start a conversation because it's about, these are the things you have to have, right? You have to um, present content, feature content in a particular way. You want to give people a sense of enough content. You want to use navigation as a way to further cement the idea of what you're about and less about navigation. Most people are going to navigate through other means, not through clicking on, on menus. And you want to uh, at least conceptually start from a place of how am I monetizing? Is it advertising, a sponsorship, is something else? But whatever that, the answer to that is, I need to be thinking about that early and not as a, as a tack on to a later conversation. So this basic template is a place where we like to start our conversation with the potential customers. But as I'll show you when we get to Cal Matters a little bit, we can take it in many, many different directions from here. Often, and as we learn through our own experience in, uh, in speaking to many of your peers and, and, and organizations similar to yours, <clears throat> a very early question that comes to mind is, well, this is great. We like what you're doing, but how is this actually going to help us grow our audience? Because that is the key ultimately to, um, to increasing your, your capability to earn revenue off all this. And, and by audience development, it's not only size of audience, but it's also depth of relationship, right? And so we really firmly believe that the, the, the key to that is really to connecting to your loyal users, right? To really maximize and, and explore all venues, all may, ways that those loyal users can be rewarded for being part of your family and um, conversely or, or su su subsequently can reward you for that relationship. And then you can think more and more about how do you then grow the pie uh, or the, the size of that audience. Um, so we think a lot about conversions. We think about uh, building in, uh, using a lot of built-in services. So some of the things that have been built in or in process of being building, built in are, for example, web notifications, uh, use of e email newsletters, and I can get into more detail on that uh, if you want, um, optimizing the feeds for Google News, Apple News, uh, built-in Google AMP for those type of mobile views. Um, uh, we're working on the integrated social media publishing. But uh, this is another area where the tools are only half the equation. It's the use of those and working with you to really maximize them, uh, often to uh, learn from you on what works even better to then implement that back into the platform uh, as part of the, the, the dynamic. A natural consequence from uh, audience is uh, revenue, right? And so we are 
<clears throat> ready to roll from day one with three different ways of, uh, of monetization. Uh, one uh, which we, we, we focus a lot on is around uh, reader revenue, which is our integrated partnership with, uh, with Piano. Very robust, typically used by the largest media players, uh, New York Times, The Economist, uh, entities of that, of that size who really have sophisticated um, uh, experience with reader revenue uh, around membership management, different types of, of uh, donation subscriptions, uh, paywalls if needed, uh, metered, um, metered experiences in order to know when to ask or invite people into different um, uh, further relationships with you. So all that is built into our platform in terms of a relationship between the platform and Piano. We uh, put bodies uh, against helping you learn how to use this. We build the initial experiences for you uh, and with you in terms of uh, your guidance. And then we kind of teach you how to use this tool, how to really take over using uh, piano as a means to maintaining an ongoing dialogue with your readers through the presentation of different offers, different opportunities, different invitations that feed not only your knowledge of those, re of those readers and how they uh, really, what they value about that relationship, but e each of those can become individually a, a revenue uh, opportunity. We also think that um, uh, small to medium sized publishers have a uh, often uh, don't maximize their local sponsorship opportunities, typically be because the tools are not um, intuitive. And so we built a very simple sponsorship um, man, uh, management system into the CMS. It literally is upload image, identify how the sponsorship runs, and, um, and that will then automatically feed the, the tracking of that within uh, Google Analytics. And essentially you can run uh, concurrently or individually, site-wide, category-wide, page-wide, uh, or single page uh, sponsorships. You can have concurrent ones, you can uh, stagger them, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, and this enables a lot of native content, but it also becomes a, a, a easily managed way to deal with uh, smaller advertisers who, who you're trying to uh, expand into your digital um, uh, platforms. And last but not least, um, uh, we have plugged into Google Ad Manager, which allows us or our partners that we can bring to the table to serve programmatic ads and things of that nature to your uh, site. Certainly you can bring your partner and we can plug them into the pipeline that we've built into there. And we can use and show you how and help you with using Ad Manager for internal promotion uh, examples. And um, I can just speak quickly to uh, Cal Matters used Google Ad Manager this past uh, cycle uh, in November for Newsmatch. That was the way that they were serving uh, Newsmatch uh, uh, creative or on their site and then using retargeting to have some of those users as they went to then other places on the internet who were also receiving uh, CalMatters um, uh, follow through in terms of uh, seeing that creative. So the tools are there. Uh, we work directly hand in hand with you to teach you how to use them. We build a lot of it for you uh, as, we, as we start. But the goal is ultimately that this is one of those skill sets that really is uh, critical for your organization to to own and the uh, and so we want to make sure that we, we're, we're setting you up for success in terms of revenue <clears throat> in uh, world-class uh, journalism from ap we have a, a partnership with the associated press that will uh, enable uh, their feeds to cycle through to your sites and and maybe more interesting importantly your content assuming uh standards and uh, practices uh, uh meet Associated Press uh, guidelines, things of that nature, uh, your content could cycle through upwards into their organization and if approved would be uh, distributed uh, worldwide or, or within uh, the parameters that can be uh, accessed. Um, more to that, we can speak to that more if, uh, if you're interested later. And last but not least, in terms of this quick review of the tour page before we get into the actual product, is the dashboard. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we believe uh, we're not here to try to replace other people's uh, very well thought and very deep and capable uh, analytics. Uh, but what we really wanted to do was to try to uh, harness the ability of WordPress and, and its dashboard to help keep everybody on the same page. And so if you envision this screen here is really the, your login in WordPress. When you first log in, you see a dashboard that uh, if you're familiar with WordPress often has a lot of information about WordPress, about um, uh, plugins and things of that nature. We're taking care of all that. So this page can be repurposed as follows. On the left side, these are your most basic, um, you know, standard uh, analytics, right? Recent page, you know, audience, uh, UVs, uh, uh, breakdown between are they returning or new? Where are they coming from? Things of that nature, some, you know, high level engagement compared over previous months, things of that nature, all being pulled from Google Analytics. Um, in the future, we'll be able to pull from other sources. 
the right side is more of a kind of a KPI status, right? So the idea being that, um, <clears throat> as we mentioned earlier, the key that we believe the three key uh, areas for your focus are really that, that content, how it's being distributed, who's finding it, the audience, and the revenue. And so we would work with you to um, uh, anonymize uh, the, your goals, right? So these, are, these aren't hard dollar numbers. These are uh, weighted, at, weighted numbers. So for example, if, you're, if in March, the audience goal is, uh, is worth 55 of what you're really trying to do uh, in that month, it has a, ca a value of 55. And we, on a weekly basis, can track, well, what's the progress? Where, are, where is the organization against these higher level goals? And in that sense, can offer up um, quick hits on, well, what's going well, what's, going, what's not so going well against those, uh, those goals. And that creates a natural place for dialogue, right? Amongst yourselves, certainly, but also this is where we can come in and help further if, if, if requested and, and needed. Okay, the uh, membership uh, goal is lagging. Not only are we not hitting our goal, but we're actually underperforming. Hey, uh, TNP and your um, audience development uh, folk, what do we think? Let's take a deeper dive into the data and maybe try to identify why this isn't uh, working as we'd hoped. So again, this is the, uh, what's available to you on the tour uh, of the site. Um, thanks for bearing with me as I, went, as I go through it. So I'm gonna jump, through, jump directly now to uh, some of those templates that Meryl mentioned. This is a list that we maintain of all the different types of, of, uh, of templates we've created. You see there's about 13, 14 uh, categories to those templates. Within each, there are uh, multiple um, uh, versions. And within each of those versions, there's much, there can be multiple states of them. So we have everything from uh, home pages to different types of article pages, short, long form. We have uh, uh, two primary uh, home plate, uh, excuse me, home page templates that can be um, uh, customized further. We have categories. We have different types of category pages. Uh, we thought through how the search results are going to be and how that recirculates to other types of content as well author archive, how the navigation works, roadblocks for when uh, piano is integrated, the dashboard and so forth. Um, let me show you um, CalMatters uh, as a live example of what we've done. If you recall the homepage I showed you earlier, let me just jump back to it. Apologies for the screens jumping around. But just to give you a sense that out of something as simple and um, uh, basic, if you will, as this, when we brought it to, to life with Cal Matters as a site that is live, that has a history, has a volume of content, has already defined various types of content types, there was a need to reorganize that homepage and add, and add significant elements to it. So some of those elements were just a reorganization of the featured uh, content area. Uh, Cal Matters, um, as Merrill mentioned, was uh, going through a rebranding, representation of itself to its audience in California. So they wanted a, an ability to clearly uh, unambiguously present who they are. So that's front and center of their homepage. Their business model is based really around sponsors. Um, and so they have this uh, thanks to sponsors module, um, uh, this is the institutional sponsors. And then uh, we gave them all the access to the right rail that they need in order to really constantly be updating different types of content they have, um, uh, areas of focus, uh, podcasts, their explainers, uh, featured series and things of that nature around this, around the, uh, the center. Well, this is, uh, uh, you know, a, essentially a blog roll as you can envision with ample space for long headlines. They do a lot of he long headlines, a lot of, uh, compiled headlines when they're, when they have, um, different types of content that are covering a number of different, uh, subject matters in one. There's also opportunity to highlight staff, there's interstitials uh, being connected to Piano here. So if you become a member, that is information is ultimately going to Piano for future use in terms of serving members with different types of, um, of uh, offers. There's also email sign up down below, here it is. These in a next iteration will become more dynamic. So if you are a member uh, and you've already registered, you will not see the member uh, module, you will see some other offer, things of that nature. Um, some of the uh, additional developments done with CalMatters are around the content types. I'll give you an example of, um, for them, excuse me, the Zoom, the Zoom, um, little Zoom uh, controller is in the way. So for CalMatters, it was important to them to, uh, or they serve a purpose to a lot of their 
um, uh, media partners in California to provide background on an effect of a lot of policies being uh, debated or implemented in California. And so they're often seen as an entity that provides the explaining of the effect of policy. So for them, we essentially uh, did some innovative work thanks to 10UP with, uh, and Gutenberg with the blocks to create explainers. So each of these explainers, uh, this is not conceptually any different than what you may have seen elsewhere. Uh, Vox was very well known for its explainers, for example. But each of these explainers is essentially a page compiled as, as a block. Each block can be uh, customized with different content. You can do all sorts of embeds, data viz, and so forth. Each explainer is also shareable, embeddable uh, on third-party sites. Uh, it will go lock, stock, and barrel with everything inside that block, including the sponsorship, including the credit to uh, CalMatters, the links back, and so forth. So this was just an example of how we took our basic page template, which I realize now I never showed you, so apologies, uh, and worked its capabilities, its features into, into a different uh, construct, which was the explainer construct, which is a series of pages essentially laid out as a card deck. Um, the, uh, and let me show you the, the sorry, this is the, the basic uh, article template. Um, it has everything you're gonna need and things that you may not need. So we have, uh, we have figured, into the layout um, the placement of ad units. Uh, we often get the question, why is the banner ad uh, suggested below the uh, featured content um, image? And that is because precisely uh, our research and our experience tells us that most people, when they, when they come into a side door into a article page, they'll do exactly what I did here. They'll land on the page and they'll give it a little shift up to kind of start getting into the content. So ad units placed above that, be they for internal purposes or third party ads, uh, often don't get seen, and so that's a missed opportunity. Add unit place below gets seen uh, many more times. Uh, we have modules that are totally optional. If you if you have the editorial bandwidth to create a summary of what this page is, that TLDR kind of idea, the module is there to use it. If you don't fill it out, it, it collapses, nothing appears there. The social media icons are in color because that makes uh, that leads people to click more, and they lock into place. Obviously, this is an, uh, an image I'm showing you, not uh, the actual uh, live live page, just, just to show you, sorry about that, show you the uh, overall template. We have the other ad units um, that will appear periodically. Uh, we have the slideshow template built uh, to optimize for mobile, right? The, the slide um, swiping uh, mechanism that is so popular in mobile, we brought that into the home page, uh, excuse me, into the desktop uh, to kind of show how that behavior really is permeating all uh, experiences. Everybody's accustomed to swiping, uh, regardless of the device or the screen size. We have uh, everything you're gonna need, you know, pull quotes, uh, embeds, you can have a newsletter subscription, you can have donations uh, requests, you can have any type of internal uh, messaging that you want can be controlled editorially, uh, embedded images, additional uh, ads, uh, you have your um, uh, your editorial notice, uh, be it an update or some other messaging you want. You can have newsletter subscription in line, read next, comments can be uh, bolted in uh, or activated when, when needed, latest in category or latest in the feed, however you want. So all those things that you normally are gonna need, it's all been thought through, it's all been laid out in a very clean, uh, mobile optimized um, fashion. And then now coming back to CalMatters from those um, uh, building blocks, we can do a lot of different things in terms of uh, customization. So another example of what was customized for um, uh, CalMatters are the, uh, what, what are called the project pages, the long form. And let me give you an example of that. I believe election 2020 is one. So election 2020 is a uh, collection, it's a long form collection of, it's a series, right? So, and each component of that series tends to be long. So here it is, uh, all the different areas and components of the series are listed on the right. The um, content can be organized in, in many different ways. You can embed pretty much any type of uh, uh, third party video, uh, data viz, et cetera, um, graphics, so forth, it's all shareable. And it just creates a, a clean way that uh, to present longer form content. And I apologize, I didn't pick the best example of that, but this would be the, the template that could be used for that. And um, again, we have templates pretty much for every uh, capability. Uh, and I think that kind of sums up everything. And I'd rather 
end early and get to questions and to keep droning on. So thank you all for your patience as I've droned. And I will come back to the, I'll kick it back to, um, sorry, to, to Tyson uh, in terms of uh, any questions. Tyler. Tyler, excuse me, sorry. No problem, thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Um, that was really great to see. I hope everybody took note of uh, all the really impressive uh, ways they integrate your business strategy mm -hmm. into the direct design and UX of your mm -hmm. site. I think that's, that's really important. Um, so I do have a few questions that I've received. Um, so I'm gonna get through those uh, so we can get through as many of them as we can. Um, I have a question about uh, look at, wanting to hear or see more about how uh, email campaigns work within the yes. platform. I'm glad you asked. Sorry, I, I had promised I was going to show you that, and I didn't. So, um, let's uh, say uh, the. Um, let me first show you. So a few things. So one is, um, let me show you the front end. We can do email in in a number of ways, right? And the first is, um, the feeds can certainly be uh, exported to your standard uh, list of uh, ESPs out there, from Mailchimp to. Uh, sale through and so forth and we've done that and that's that's never an issue. We're not great advocates of the just send the feed and let it run. We believe um, newsletters often gain value through some level of curation and that curation can be done in the ESP and we have that that is a uh, an example um, that is currently being done with uh, with CalMatters but the curation can also be done in the CMS and so let me show you what that can look like. So um, yeah, uh, bear with me. Just trying to remember. No, it's here. So news. Um, sorry, Cal Matters has, as an example, Cal Matters uh, puts out a daily uh, newsletter by this gentleman Dan Moran, and here's an example of it. And uh, it is published as a web page, right? So it can take all the benefits of web page. It can be shared socially. It generates um, uh, page views. It can. Um, uh, you know, link to other uh, content around the uh, the site. Uh, it, it gains uh, search uh, credit, you know, uh, credence and so forth. And it can have um, it has a unique um, uh, advertisement Im uh, implementation that uh, was specific to the way Cal Matters has historically been selling advertisements against this newsletter. So the creation of that newsletter is done in the CMS. And you're looking at the, at the staging site, so you're gonna see a lot of draft and whatnot. But just to walk you through a little bit. So this could be uh, in the uh, staging, in the, excuse me, in the CMS, you would create a new newsletter. Let's see if this, let me see if I have a better example. Uh, one, and in this creation of the newsletter, the, the blocks have been set to be, uh, um, you know, the different uh, headline, the, the, the body, and then the different newsletter sections. And what we've done is we've created this construct of uh, newsletter sections, which are what tell the site where to drop in the ad, right? So the, um, the ads are being loaded through a second uh, component, which are newsletter ads. The newsletter ads piece knows, uh, each ad has its, um, uh, is, is told where, what slot it's going to go and when it expires. And that ad not only goes into the page, as you're seeing here, but that whole feed, the page and the ads, is exported to the ESP and renders as a, uh, a newsletter in the email um, a client with the ads placed where they're supposed to go. And as ads uh, cycle out, for example, if I receive that newsletter uh, today or I see that newsletter page uh, uh, today, and I look at it again in two weeks and the advertiser has changed in those two weeks, I will see the, the, the new advertiser on the web page. But if I forward the newsletter a week later, it will carry the ad of the person, of the entity that paid to be in that day's newsletter, right? So the, the email client is, uh, is true to the moment the web page uh, evolves so that it's, you know, both are always reflecting the correct uh, terms of those uh, sponsorships or advertising against the newsletter. So I hope that gave you the range of what we do um, in terms of what the, the product can do uh, around newsletters. Um, if you wanna see what they look like, feel free to uh, sign up to uh, CalMatters and you'll see uh, the different newsletters they have. They have a weekly one on Saturdays, they have the daily one by uh, Dan Moran 
uh, which comes out every morning and it's called uh, What Matters. Here's the, uh, the category. Hope that answered the question. Hello? Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, next question. Um, is, there, um, is there an extra fee to feature AP content on the site? I'll let Merrill speak to that. Um, uh, AP is a partner of ours. We do multiple things with them. One of the things we do is we make AP content uh, available and we'll be doing so this year to um, TNP customers at a dramatically reduced rate and that content can include photos and it can be customized um, to include, um, you know, regional content or things particularly appropriate to a, um, to a potential customer. So um, AP will be selling what we do. AP will be providing content. And interestingly, depending on uh, the kind of content that's uh, represented in this call, AP is really interested in distributing uh, news project customer content on various of their wires. So it's also a distribution opportunity for our customers. Cool. Um, Tyler, I see a question from Todd that's on my feed. Yes. Uh, yeah, why don't we go to that one? Um, so uh, there's a question about um, if there are story templates for very photo driven stories. Let me unmute. Um, th there's not yet a specific template for. Uh, um, oh, sorry, was the question of uh, photo driven stories, right? So no, we do not currently have a specific template for that. It is, uh, ironically enough, I, uh, one of the ones on our on our on our to do list. Um, what we're also uh, maybe as a temporary uh, step is we're, we're we want to Im, uh, infuse more flexibility into our our standard um, article page, right? To enable that the top of that page be uh, replaced with video or um, photo gallery or things of that nature. Um, so that's that's a probably a, a shorter step while we really think through the UX of a of a full uh, photo led story. Now, one of the things that we chose to do early on, and I think was really manifest to our experience with Cal Matters, was while as much experience as we may have at TNP, we certainly don't have all the answers for every instance, and uh, we want to really be led by the market and by our partners as much as possible. So we were really thrilled that we had a chance to develop the, the long form, the project template uh, I showed you earlier with Cal Matters, the people who were gonna be using it right out of the gate, in fact, uh, pushing its envelope right out of the gate. And it would be wonderful to not sit back and, inv and invent uh, you know, a, a photo led story template that we think would work and only to find out that the people are gonna use it, that's not exactly what they're looking for. So I'd rather go through that process with people who are gonna use it. Um, uh, so you know, I'll say that. The, the last thing I'll say is that one of the benefits certainly, and again, I don't know if, if everybody on the call is very familiar with Gutenberg, um, WordPress is Gutenberg, but all those capabilities that Gutenberg has are enabled on our, in our CMS as well, right? It's not like we stripped out a lot of things from Gutenberg. So all the, uh, the different galleries that Gutenberg has are also available. The different ways that uh, pull quotes can be rendered. We have the version we designed specifically for our templates, but the other ones are also uh, available there. So you have a really a uh, wider range of, of, um, of blocks that can pretty much do most anything uh, baked into the, plot, the product. Uh, I, I did get some questions actually about sort of the Gutenberg experience mm -hmm. and just what the experience is for a writer and editor working inside. Uh, would it be possible to see a quick demo of that? Uh, yes. Go to, go to the public page, right? Uh, yeah. Um, let me just, you know, better than the most thing, let me just remember it's uh, WordPress Gutenberg. Oh, that's there. So let me just find the... If you haven't yet, I mean, the, the Gutenberg uh, uh, open page is actually built in Gutenberg. And you can edit their website and play with all of it. So here is, um, let me just close or minimize the Zoom. This is, uh, this is a Gutenberg page. I could write a title and you can already see here, here's all the different um, like, uh, embedded capabilities. It's a little tool I can do in different types of uh, blocks. Uh, if you weren't familiar, the blocks are essentially pre-formatted um, capabilities, and it can be from things uh, the most recently used to common blocks, from galleries to different lists of paragraphs, different headings, right? You can embed uh, cover images. 
you have um, different formatting, you can have widgets, um, calendar, things of that nature. And one of the more um, uh, awesome ones are all the embeds that are ready to roll. So all these different uh, content uh, sources are ready to be embedded, pre-formatted to work with Gutenberg, no additional work needed. Um, and the list uh, is long to begin with and is constantly growing longer. So that's the, that's the basics. And our template, what we've done is really pre-format, let me just give you the article, the basic article, pre-format um, some components of what, that, uh, what those blocks are in order for them to render in the specific way that we thought of, right? So here I am adding a title and then I just hit enter and now I can choose a different block. Now I'm gonna have uh, an image and there, boom, I just grab it, I would just grab an image, right? Let's just see, it's that simple. And then there it is. And if I want to change it, I can, on the right, I can make some, uh, some editing to that image or I can use the tool to kind of reformat and go forward. And I can choose from pretty much all those types of blocks that were that you've seen, and actually now this is the live site. There's more than than their demo site has, and you see some blocks that we've customized. These are the ones that we created specifically for Cal Matters. Um, there's others that were um, uh, specifically formatted. Here's our version of the slideshow, which is that one I showed you that is uh, you know slide um, swipe left uh, kind of uh, a mechanism. That's our version of the slideshow. Elsewhere is the kind of the standard Gutenberg uh, slideshow that you could use as well. We also, sorry, um, since I see it here, let me take two seconds. Uh, our CMS also allows you to manage podcasts. And what does that mean? It means that you can create the podcast franchise as a category in, uh, in the CMS. And what that allows you to do is as you're creating that franchise, you're creating its relationship to iTunes, Stritcher, and so forth. And every time you upload a, um, an episode of that podcast, um, onto a, uh, one of the web pages here, not only is it tied in back into the franchise, the franchise tells Stitcher and iTunes and so forth, hey, new, new episode is available and all their mechanisms kick in to do that. And you're now also get, get gaining from not only can your podcast episode be found via search, it's recirculating through your site through the same ways that other content, your article content or your, uh, you know, any of your other content is being, is all, uh, you know, um, connected on the back end through category and tag and things of that nature. And so your podcast content is recirculating to the site in the same way as any other content. It's not living in some isolated uh, area. So without going too much further, is this so, enough in terms of Gutenberg or do you need to see more? So just to make clear, you're, you're now looking inside our site, but we started this, the answer to this question in the public WordPress Gutenberg site, which everyone right. can access. And there's the URL atop the page there. Right. And it gives you a good explanation of what's possible. Um, it shows you, uh, you know, how to do these blocks and it gives you a good list of, uh, of the main blocks that are available. So great. it's really great yeah, that they did this. Yeah. Cool. Um, so we got some, some different uh, questions. Um, mm -hmm. You talked about uh, mobile optimizing mm -hmm. uh, the site. Um, can you expand on what that means? Do you support AMP? Um, yes. Yes. So, um, so what it means is that, you know, we recognize that uh, increasingly, uh, you know, the, 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 this, the news content is going to be consumed in a mobile environment, but that doesn't mean that one uh, should ignore the reality of desktop. Um, it is still a significant uh, component of where people find news content and, um, and we didn't want to, you know, just jump on a banner and say, you know, mobile first, because what does that really mean, right? So uh, Gutenberg and WordPress and, um, and our UX uh, firm, Charming Robot, all take what we call mobile optimized approach, meaning that everything that you're thinking of, you're, you're gonna put your finger on the scale in terms of pro mobile, uh, as opposed to let me just design it in, 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 uh, in desktop and then convert it. So the example is the slideshow, right? It's a, it's a simple example. Mobile tells us uh, that people are very comfortable with this notion of swiping, swiping up, swiping down. Apologies, this is my son just coming in from school. I'm on a phone call. I'll get to you later. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, um, you know, the, the slideshow uh, is optimized. Uh, to the swiping uh, construct is what, it's the way we're all now getting more and more comfortable with seeing photos. So we brought that from a mobile environment into the desktop. So if you're on the desktop, if you remember the, the, um, the image, let me just come back to it. It's flush right. Right, so it's it's telling you swipe to see more photos. 
It's not centered. It's not a gallery. I mean, it, it can pop open, it can light box, it can do those things. But the, the idea is that the, um, as the uh, behavior of, uh, through mobile is becoming the dominant behavior, we want to bring that into, as it makes sense, into the other environments in this example, desktop. So that's that. In terms of AMP, yes, we're optimized for AMP. In fact, we just went through a specific um, uh, cycle of, of, uh, of further tweaking the AMP uh, um, capability of the site, taking the, the plugin that we're using, expanding on it, uh, enhancing some additional uh, uses of that plugin within our platform, really making the plugin and the platform work better, essentially, it would be the, the, way, the simple way of explaining it. Um, and are seeing the results with CalMatters uh, uh, almost out of the gate. So that's, that's been a positive um, uh, enhancement. And um, we're doing the same with um, Apple News, which is, while not necessarily mobile specific, uh, it is a, an important um, uh, distributor and, and, and way for people to discover content. And Apple News tells us that they, they really need um, small to medium-sized publishers to be better represented in their mix, uh, that, that optimization of content coming out of small to medium publishers in order to be maximized by Apple News is something that they we're, te we're speaking to them uh, to help uh, uh, make true. So, uh, and mobile is a big part of Apple News, as, as we can all imagine. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, great. And certainly, sorry, the last thing I would say is, um, you know, WordPress has uh, uh, done a lot of good work in terms of being able to edit, um, you know, your site, your content, and everything from the mobile app uh, or directly from uh, the website, excuse me. Um, I've done it. It's never easy, but it certainly is uh, eminently doable and, and pretty intuitive and, and, and possible. So, Great. Um, in, in addition to, I think, for me, an important thing about mobile optimization is page load speed. Um, mm -hmm. and could you talk a little bit about uh, someone had a concern that at, at least with the, the way their site is currently set up as they continually add content to the site it sort of slows down their page I don't know if that's from service <coughs> time or anything like that um, but how do you sort of optimize your page load speed uh, uh, iteratively right in a sense of you know the, the we've we've done a lot of work particularly you know 10 up this is their uh, bread and butter right they're recognized as one of the you know the world's premier wordpress uh, developers uh, out there they're um, i like to think of them that they're uh, uh, vertically integrated with the wordpress ecosystem from the highest levels um, you know they are part of the, the groups that get invited to um, help wordpress think through of where wordpress should go next uh, down to the, you know, the open source and the, you know, the, uh, just all the different repositories out there. So TenUp has extraordinary capability in terms of, uh, of setting and managing uh, a WordPress site or a platform in this case. Um, VIP uh, also pushes the boundaries or pushes um, certain parameters uh, in terms of security uh, and the way your, uh, sites that are on VIP need to work. Some of that is very much pro page load speed and things of that nature, but some of that, you know, truth be told, can slow the site down. So the, the short answer to what you're saying, to what you're asking is, what we've done, what we've done is try to set the base template to be as absolutely fast and, and, and um, lean as possible. Uh, WordPress has done a lot of work in terms of page, uh, uh, image sizing and, um, and uh, optimizing the different sizes, uh, a lot of content Visual content creators have issues with that because it does often come at the expense of the, the, the pure um, quality of the image and things of that nature. But we see, and I can speak to, to Cal Matters, we have seen a, a significant improvement to, from where they were uh, the prior to their migration with us. Um, uh, but I wouldn't tell you that we don't have work to do. There is still more we can do. We're still optimizing the way uh, we render those images, uh, again, within the parameters of what WordPress allows us to do and VIP, but, in, but also in helping uh, the editors at CalMatters uh, better think through what image they, they wanna choose uh, and what crop and things of that nature, that's helpful. Um, we didn't go into it earlier, but um, I mentioned it, that part of our goal is to allow the local site to have the flexibility it needs to customize it's kind of its front layer, right? That, you know, that the right content and the right mix of content and the right categories and types of content um, and local um, uh, relationships to sponsors or, or, or partners, all that be easily 
uh, controlled and managed locally. But some of that can add weight to the page. And I, I can use Kalman as an example. There's some of the images that some of their uh, members, institutional members, have uh, added to the site that, that are larger than they need to be. But there's also things that we can do to mitigate that, and that is on our roadmap and our, and our work with them. So uh, I can vouch that the performance of the Kalamata site today is significantly better than it was in terms of page load and speed and uh, the order in which things are rendering and so forth uh, is improved from where it was. But, you know, I don't want to lie and say it's a home run right out of the gate. There's still work to be done, and it's an iterative process. And it takes two to tango. We're the tech side, the product side. They're the editors who, who, who have a significant amount of say over what goes onto the site. And we're, you know, we're, we're, we're working together. Great. Uh, I think we got time for one more quick question. Go for it. And then uh, I think we're out of time here. Um, can you talk a little further about just the cost structure? Um, people are asking specifically if there are fees associated with the specific services like piano, mm -hmm. or is it all sort of cost inclusive? Uh, Merrill, I think. Yeah, certainly. Um, so we have a startup fee, and that includes um, uh, probably for most people on this call who don't have 100,000 stories in their inventory, uh, migration onto, uh, onto our site. Um, and that is, uh, that is currently $20,000, and that includes the complete rebuild of your site, all the templates and so forth. And we're happy to talk to people about how that um, how that is paid out. There's a monthly a subscription fee going forward that includes hosting, includes piano, includes our audience development services, includes um, Word, uh, uh, WordPress services. Everything is bundled into the one monthly subscription fee, which will vary depending on which of our uh, monthly services um, the customer requires. But it's currently set at $5,000 a month. Um, it will be reduced for some customers, perhaps if people need enormous consultative help from us, it might be a little bit higher, but that's the general range of our, of our fees. Great, thanks. Um, so, okay, I have one more, uh, should be a quick, quick answer and then I'm going to have to cut off short, um, which is that um, our, our, the implementations as you, as you begin to host more clients, um, are you giving them all an individual instance of WordPress or are you sharing, are you using like a shared instance in a big database? Apologies, I was on mute. Um, so we're, we're, we, what TMP is a platform, right? So each of the, uh, the members are, are part of that platform. So in that sense, it is a, um, a single, um, uh, a single database in terms of the, uh, the infrastructure. But certainly the, the data, uh, it's your Google Analytics, it's, uh, it's your Piano account, it's your uh, you know, MailChimp or ESP, and, and that's all yours. We're just connecting to your, your, those service providers that, that you want to work with. And certainly we have our recommendations about that. But. Okay. So uh, just to Tyler, um, I'm, I am, uh, for people who have questions, Merrill at thenewsproject.net. I'm easy to find uh, through LinkedIn or social media or whatever. Please reach out. Um, if you'd like to continue the conversation, again, it's Merrill, M-E-R-R-I-L-L, -L, uh, at thenewsproject.net, and I can make Miguel and other team members available. And Tyler, you're going to add to that, I think. Yes. Um, so I will uh, send an email, follow-up email with contact information so you can go further. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't get to everybody's questions, but feel free to email with any other questions you have. We did have a, a lot of questions come in. Um, so uh, thank you all for being here. Um, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you. We really appreciate your joining. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Thank Take you. Care.